Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's lesson, we'll be looking at the characteristics of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. And we're also going to learn about the periodic trends for metallic character. Okay guys, before we jump into the lesson, let's just do a quick review on where in the periodic table I'm going to find my metals, my nonmetals, and my metalloids. All the elements that are shaded in blue, alright, all these elements over here, these are my metals, okay? That includes the D block here, my S block, these guys, and even my F block down here too. So these guys are my metals. My non-metals are going to be the yellow elements over here. They're my non-metals. So even hydrogen located over here, it's still a non-metal. And these elements right here, all these guys, kind of the pinkish color, they're going to be my metalloids. Those are my, metal, my metalloids. Sometimes they're known as semi-metals. They have characteristics of both metals and non-metals. Now using that review, we're going to springboard now into the next part of the lesson here, identifying characteristics of metals, non-metals, and metalloids. Metals, most of them are solids. Okay, there is liquid mercury, so mercury does exist as a liquid, but otherwise, most of my metals are solid. Malleable means can I really pound it into a sheet or can I bend it? And ductile means can I conduct an electric current through it? So most are going to be solid, malleable, and ductile. But one of the keys that we've learned so far is that a lot of them are going to have very few valence electrons, meaning less than four electrons in their outer shell. So if I look at my periodic table, Right here, okay, where the last slide we looked at, if I look at how many electrons are in the outer shell, I have one in the outer shell, I have two in the outer shell, and over here I'll have three in the outer shell, and four. And if we look to see where most of the metals are, most of the metals are going to be having less than four valence shell electrons. And while we're on this, we're going to also check out that most of my non-metals are going to have more than four valence electrons, five, six, seven, or eight. So my metals are going to have few valence electrons, and I'm just going to say here, usually and typically less than four. And it's even more common to have three or less. One of the things you're going to notice about the metals is that they're located on the left side of the periodic table. On the left side of the periodic table, I have low ionization energy. That's the energy needed to remove an outer shell electron. And because they have very low ionization energy, they're going to lose their electrons. And when they lose their electrons, they're going to form positive ions known as cations. Another fact about metals is that they have very low electronegativity. That means they don't attract electrons to themselves. And in fact, they let electrons be pulled away from them. Some examples of metals, just a few. Here's sodium. Sodium is a silvery metal. It's malleable. It can be bent. It can be pounded into sheets. And it can also conduct much current. Potassium is another metal. Once again, as you see, silvery looking, shiny, although not every single metal is going to be silvery looking. These two are examples of them. We're going to see that the metallic character, these characteristics that we're talking about of low ionization energy, low electronegativity, conducts an electric current, is malleable. These are all trends that I'm going to see as I go across my periodic table, my metallic character increases this way. And we're also going to see as I go down a group, my metallic character increases as well. So down here is where I have very low ionization energy. Down here is where I have very low electronegativity. And down here is where I have actually very large atoms, large atomic size. Excuse me for that little blur of ink there. Nonmetals, on the other hand, they can be solid, liquids, or gases. And we see a lot of nonmetals as gases. A few of them are also going to be solids, and we do have bromine, which is going to be our liquid. Now, unlike metals, the nonmetals are brittle. 
I cannot bend or pound them into sheets. You know, they're not going to conduct an electric current as readily. So brittle simply means I can take a hammer and it's going to shatter. What you're going to notice about nonmetals is that they have higher ionization energies, meaning it's going to be harder for an atom to remove an electron from a nonmetal. What I'm trying to say is that they tend to hold on to their electrons much stronger. And that's simply because they are smaller atoms and their nucleuses are going to be closer to the edge of their electron clouds. They also have high electronegativities. Because they're very small atoms, they're going to have high electronegativities and they're going to attract electrons into their clouds. They're going to pull electron pairs into their clouds. Some examples of a, of a brittle, solid, nonmetal would be sulfur. It's a, it's a yellow, when you crush it, it turns into powder, but it's a yellow you know, rock that could kind of, when you hit it with a hammer, explode into smaller particles. It is brittle. It is not going to bend when I hit it with a hammer, where a metal would bend. A metal is not going to break apart when I hit it with a hammer. Here's bromine. Yeah, we do have liquid nonmetals. This is our liquid nonmetal. It's bromine. It's a, a reddish liquid, and in this case, it's evaporating readily into readily into reddish gas as well. Metalloids are going to be located along the staircase of the periodic table. They have properties of both metals and nonmetals. So all the characteristics that I've expressed to you about metals and the characteristics that I've expressed to you about nonmetals, my metalloids will share properties of both of them. And they're not going to have all of the properties of metals or all the properties of nonmetals, but they're going to have a blend of them. This is a great example. I like to use silicon as an example. Silicon is a metalloid, but what you see is that it has the shininess of something that's metallic. It almost looks like this piece of silicon was wrapped in aluminum foil. But if I took a hammer to this, you would find out that this has an inner consistency that's more like a rock that you would find in your yard, like a stone or a pebble. Where if it took a hammer to something like a rock, or even a piece of concrete, it's going to shatter. And this stone, which is shiny like a metal, will shatter and not bend. So once again, silicon is, is a very, very good example of a metalloid, simply because it looks in appearance like it's metallic, but all the way through it's not. It actually looks more like a stone that would find in a yard. So the periodic trends that we're learning here is that my atoms become more metallic in character as they go from right to left across a period. And also, as they go down a group, I increase in my metallic character as well. Now, you could reverse these arrows and say I'm increasing in non-metallic character as well, but really, the, the trend we're looking at here is called metallic character. What characteristics do you have that are similar to metals? And they're all going to increase as they go this way, and once again, increase as they go down a group. And we're going to finish there, guys. That wraps up our periodic trends in metallic character, and that also wraps up our characteristics of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.